Hey, my friends, Dr. Barry Burns here with Top Dog Trading, and today our topic is day trading support resistance clusters. So, first of all, let's look at what type of support resistance we have on here today. And we're going to use three different types of support resistance in today's lesson. So, the first one is the pivot levels, the floor trader pivots. So, PP, that's your pivot point, and that's your central pivot, sometimes it's called. And then above that, we will have, well, on this chart, it's actually hard to see, but way up there is R1. So that's the next floor trader pivot above it. And then the floor trader pivot below it is S1, that's support one, and that's resistance one. And then in between there, I also put what I call mid pivots. So PP-S1 is the midpoint between the pivot point and support one level. And right in there, the gray one is R1-PP, so that's the midpoint between resistance level one and the pivot point. So I have another video, by the way, on mid pivots if you want to learn more about those. And I highly recommend you do look at that. It's a great, um, great tool to use is those mid pivots, and not many people use them. Anyway, uh, today, so first of all, we'll, that's one of our um, support resistance levels, or the pit, floor trader pivots, they're normally called. Then the other is just looking at major swing highs and lows. So we've got a high here that comes up and therefore we draw a horizontal line to the right. Here, if you see this blue horizontal line, that came off of this major low here. See, that's a significant low. Market retested it here. And so we just draw that line out into the future. And so this new day, that's yesterday, that's today as far as the market goes, um, even though the date's a little old down there. Um, so we draw that forward. Now, here's the point. We're getting a cluster, and these are non-correlated clusters. So we've got our pivot point, and then we have this support level from a previous major low from the previous day. And they come in around the same price level. And that's what we call a cluster. Now, why do clusters work? What's the logic of clusters? First of all, I call them non-correlated clusters because they're, com they're calculated completely differently. So that's why they're non-correlated because they come from two different calculations. And the reason that clusters provide stronger support or stronger resistance than a single support resistance level is simply because you have more market participants seeing them on their charts. So some people use floor trader pivots and others don't. So the ones who do use floor trader pivots, uh, it's a very standard calculation and they're all going to see this. Uh, and then there's gonna be other people who see this major previous low from the previous day, uh, but they don't see the, the floor trader pivots. So you got one group of market participants seeing the pivot levels. You got another group of market participants seeing the major swing low from the previous day. That means now you've got more people in the market who are seeing this support level and therefore they're more likely to respond to it. In other words, either buy off of it or take profits into it. All right, now again, as far as which major highs and lows people are looking at, that's going to depend partly on what time frame they use. This is just a quick little two minute chart. So someone trading a 60 minute chart, they're not going to see all the, with, and their chart will look like minor highs and lows. But for someone using a two minute chart, it's all relative, these will look like major highs and lows. So again, some people will see these, some won't, depending on the time interval that they use. So that's another way of looking at different times, but those are not uncorrelated support resistance because they're calculated the same way, just on different time frames. So if we look at this, by the way, um, some people may say, well, wait a minute, this support level didn't hold because the market made a lower low below it. Okay, so that is not quite accurate to say that. And the reason is support resistance, even though they look like lines and well, they are drawn as lines on our charts. In reality, the way the markets move, support resistance uh, they're not lines, they're zones, they're zones. And so my rule for that is, as long as the bars are touching it, it's still providing support. And the reason you have to consider it a zone 
where the bars are at least touching it and not just the line is because the movement of markets is not that neat and tidy. You've got millions and millions of people trading this stuff all over the world on different time frames, minute charts, tick charts, all kinds of different stuff. And so you can't expect that the market's just going to come and stop right on that, you know, pixel. <laughs> it's just asking way too much accuracy of the market. So uh, we give it that, um, that zone there to provide support. Same here. That's still providing the same support. Comes down and retests that general area. Okay, so that works. So the support is provided there. Um, by the way, just to make clear, this is yesterday's hot or yesterday's close. That's YC there, and YH is yesterday's high. So those are more types of support resistance. Again, very commonly used ones. Pretty much everybody's looking, especially at yesterday's high and low. Yesterday's low, by the way, it was way down here. I'm gonna have to squish up my scaling. There's yesterday's low. All right. So as long as the market stays between yesterday's low and yesterday's high, this whole movement in the day will look like an inside bar on a daily chart. And so it's going to be a very uh, non-committal day. It can be a neutral day, basically. So, okay, so let's look at what we got. So, oh, and the other thing I wanted to share is as long as the market stays between the central pivot or the pivot point, and yesterday's close, I consider that whole zone a neutral market, not bullish or bearish. So yesterday's close is where yesterday ended. That was the value the market decided to give after all was said and done, after all the news went through the market, after all the buying, after all the selling. At the end of the day, that's the value that the market participants decided for this particular market, which happens to be the NQs, the NASDAQ 100 futures. So. The next day, coming into the day, we have to say, okay, how does the market evaluate or, or evaluate the market today in relation to after all was said and done on the value yesterday? And then the pivot point is also another neutral point calculated in a very different manner. Now, some days those are very close, some days they're kind of far away. This day they were kind of far away, but this whole zone then is neutral. If you look at the previous day, Let's bring that up. There's the previous day. Well, there's the pin, uh, central pivot or pivot point and yesterday's close. They came in almost exactly at the same place. So that's just your neutral line. There's yesterday's low. There's yesterday's high. And again, anything inside of that would have been a uh, inside bar for the day. But this day turned out to be very, very bullish. Nothing but not just all the way up. And there's, another, by the way, another central pivot. And look how the market kind of held that for a while, hesitated there. Okay, so let's move on and finish up our video for today. So, market goes up, by the way, this blue line, that it's kind of dashed, as you can see. What that means is that's a previous high from the pre, or low in this case, from the previous day. Um, but um, the market had pierced it. So we keep it on there, knowing that it's been tested once already, but not broken. And so it comes close to it, so it creates another new line. This again, coming down, testing the pivot. Again, it's close, right? Don't expect it to go right down. I have to touch it to the penny, the pip, the tick. It's unrealistic. We come back up, what do we do? We touch that high. We come back down, where do we go? Right to the pivot point. Again, that cluster, the pivot point and that previous major low. Retest that again, go back up, where do we go? Now we go to yesterday's close. So notice, and that's the end of the day. So this whole day was really, uh, you know, much ado about nothing, so to say. <laughs> so there's money that could have been made, certainly trading on a very short-term time frame, like a two-minute chart. But at the end of the day, it pretty much closed where it closed the day before, you know, within what four or five points. So lots of little activity here and there, money to be made, but overall not much now one last thing we could add our fibonacci levels too let's do that okay so we added our fibonacci levels now talking about clusters of non-correlated support resistance so this was yesterday's close as you remember and it also happens to be what 38.2 fibonacci level that red level right there so this is a cluster of non-correlated resistance. 
um, we've got 100% down here, notice that. And so now we've also got a triple cluster of non-correlated support. We have the pivot point, the thicker line, the thinner blue line is that previous major low, and the third is the 100% Fibonacci retracement. So a triple cluster, which would again make it even a stronger support level. The more types of support resistance you have on your charts um, that are non-correlated, um, the more likely that level is to hold. So to, in closing, I do want to say that you've got to have a balance. So I think having three different types of support resistance on your charts is, is very good. But if you get more than that, what happens is you get too many lines. You get so many lines on your chart, the market really can't go anywhere without running into a line. And you feel like the market can't go anywhere. And essentially, all those lines then become meaningless. And it's also very confusing to your mind. You're always thinking, oh, I'm buying into support. I'm shorting into resistance. Support resistance is broken all the time, all the time. So this is why it's important to kind of figure out which ones are most important. And putting together the clusters is one way of doing that. So um, now the other last thing I'll say about this is don't trade support resistance by itself. So one of the big questions is, well, how do I know which support resistance levels are going to hold and the market's going to bounce off of them and which ones it's going to slice through? So clusters is one way of helping with that. But again, support resistance, that's just really one energy in the market. Those are potential price levels for the market to bounce off of, but just potential. So you've got to look at what price action is doing as it comes into those levels. How, how much energy is coming into there? How much volume is behind that move? How much acceleration? What are the candlestick patterns? Uh, what's the trend? All these different things. So it's one piece of your puzzle. It's one variable in developing a probability scenario around your trading methodology. Say, so if you like this video, please understand it's not really free. If you got value from this, you have a moral obligation to pay it forward by clicking on the share button below and share it on social media. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon below and leave a comment because that really encourages me to leave more free tutorials for you. I'm also giving away one of my favorite trade strategies called the rubber band trade. It has a really high win-loss ratio. I trade this pretty much every single day myself. It's simple. You can learn about 26 short minutes. So get the video explaining that trade strategy absolutely free by clicking in the uh, top left corner, there's a little image there, a little button you can click. Or if you're on a mobile device, then click the little eye with a circle around it in the top right corner of this video. And if you're not watching on YouTube, then there's probably a link below the video or an opt-in form on the side. Once you do that, I'll personally email the video to you with the rubber band trade strategy.